uh, badges are um, more than just an image. Uh, and uh, badges you can recognize learning happening at your course. Um, perhaps I will um, now go to show how badges look like in the course environment. So I will share I will share the screen from the um, online course on European Solidarity Corps. You will see what badges are, what are the criteria, and um, then we'll try to go into details how to set it up. So I will share the screen again. All right, it says I'm sharing the screen. Um, so I'm entering a course. Um, so you see that it has um, it has navigation and administration, which means that I'm the admin of the course. And then um, even if you are a learner, um, you should be able to see these kind of things like you should be able to see the navigation so every module of your course and then there is um, a menu item called badges yeah so here you see a number of badges available and this is what also learners can see they will see an image they will see a name of a badge they will see a description and then there will be criteria written uh, what you need to do. So it's important that you actually describe by saying, you know, what you need to do. It says you have to view all learning activities and you have to pass the final quiz. And then it automatically adds these kind of things. This is what we didn't write. This is coming automatically from the system. So in this way, you present all the badges that you are proposing for people and people can see what are the criteria. Uh, now for setting up badges, you would need to go to the administration part. So it says course administration. It may look like this for you, or even it may look like a dash here. Yeah. So just expand it, you expand it. Um, by clicking on course administration and then there are different things that are visible here and then you need to click on badges and then you will see possibility either manage existing badges or add a new badge yeah so at the moment what i will do so i have a reminder saying i need to make a break huh it's the second online meeting already so I don't know what happened. I was kicked out from the system. So I click Manage Badges. And when I click on Manage Badges, you will be able to see actually more things here, more than before, yeah? Because what you can do, uh, you can, I don't know if you can see the screen well enough. It says Disable Access. So you can disable that people would not be able to access the badge. You can go to settings, you can make a copy of a badge and then edit things, or you can delete a badge, which will not going to do it. So, for example, if I take, well, let's say, Volunteering Explorer badge, now I will make a copy, but um, uh, basically you will get exactly the same view if you go for a completely new badge. Yeah. So it would give this kind of um, possibility to edit details, criteria, message. Um, so at first you write the name of a badge, then you write a description. What is important for the description that imagine that it's a person getting a badge and then publishing the badge in some public place. So it would be super clear 
what is this badge about? So if we zoom in a little bit, um, then we can see um, essential information there, yeah? Um, what knowledge does it show? What skills does it show? And what person had to do? You can mention here the name of the course. You can mention here sometimes the organizer, even though that is in the metadata mentioned in another place. But imagine that the description is the most visible thing. If people are going to share it somewhere online, it will be uh, visible. Uh, now, image. Uh, uh, Mikhail said that he will be giving you some um, advices on how to create a badge, uh, how to use some existing visual tools, even if you are not designer, you can still uh, make it. Um, I think few few things that uh, I'm trying to follow, usually trying to understand if there is any um, visual identity. So you try to get a color code. In this place, you can see that the colors are taken from the European Solidarity Corps. So we want to be consistent in terms of colors. Uh, then we use some shape. And then we decided to add a logo. Uh, and then um, if the name of the badge is short enough, maybe we add like one or two words that can be visible. Sometimes you don't use words, you add icons. Yeah, and then I think Mikhail wanted to show Canva. Uh, so on Canva, you will find plenty of icons there. There is another really cool website for the icons called The Noun Project. Uh, I will add the link, or maybe someone can do it meanwhile I'm talking. So The Noun Project has millions of icons, and this is really cool. Uh, website. If if you pay, you just can download and change the color. If you use the free version, you just need to give um, attribution to the author of the icon, and but you can still use it. And then you can add that icon to Canva, and then you can add that um, to your badge design. Yeah. So just choose a file. You add a badge image. Uh, then concerning issuer details, here you can write the name of the issuer. So in this case, for us, it's a UK national agency. Um, you can also add things like batch expiry if you want your batch to be expired. Depends what's your course about. I don't know if you are teaching how to play a guitar and if people don't practice, you can add expiry date. We don't usually add it, really. Um, yeah, and then when it comes to criteria, um, here, uh, you choose uh, more specific um, activities that people need to finish, yeah? So, for example, if I'm now issuing a badge for a module which is linked to volunteering, then I would choose only those activities which are linked to that module. So our decision was to issue a badge for completing the entire module on volunteering, yeah? So I'm just clicking on all the activities uh, of that module. If you want to issue a badge just for, for example, uh, participating in the discussion, because you say, oh, it's kind of lacking. We want to promote a discussion among participants. You can just choose issuing badge for participating in one discussion. Or you can actually choose to mark all discussions in your online course, and you can issue a badge of I don't know, you know, an idea blaster or something like that. So you, you actually recognize um, contribution to discussion forums. So once you mark it, um, you can see that you can also choose whether you want people to actually complete that activity by certain date. In our context, it's not that important. We say whatever. People can choose when they want to do it and when they want to finish. So we don't, we keep it not marked here. And that's it. And these are the criteria. And then you click save. And then um, um, it will ask for description. Remember, you saw the description next to the criteria. 
So it's good to actually to inform people what people need to do. And in this case, we said you have to view all activities and pass the final quiz. And it could be even more specific than that. You know, you could say you need to contribute to three discussion forums of our online course. So uh, that's how it goes with criteria. Then for the message, you can also set up a message. We just say, congratulations, you just earn a badge. Um, and that's it. Um, these are the things that I think um, uh, are done automatically. Do we need to change it? Um, and, and that's it. And then when there is new badge, you will see this thing on top which says enable badges, enable access. So, you know, at first you can just build the badge, build the description, have all your team together agreeing on this if you need to, and then you enable access. And this means that people will start seeing it here under badges. Uh, so then imagine, uh, imagine that um, your, um, learners caught a badge earned the badge by doing all these activities so i will stop sharing this screen and i will go to my learner profile so i will show them how it looks like from that side uh right let me share another screen then because i had to go to another window Okay, this should be visible now and should be able to see the part latest badges. So I'm now not anymore in the admin. I'm just as a course learner. And then you can see my progress. You can see which um, sessions did I finish. And then because I finished the entire module on volunteering, I'm able to see my latest earned badges. I can click on it. Uh, and here you can see the metadata I was talking about. So actually you are able to see the image, name, uh, issuer name, um, badge name, badge description, and then course criteria. Yeah. Uh, there is no badge expiry, but it says when it was issued and it says what is the evidence. Now what you can do with the badge um hop platform so far at least this version um, of moodle doesn't allow too much to do from directly from from the platform itself but um, um this link that you have the url link it's already something that you can use when you want to share uh, i think some people heard of uh, the backpack kind of public place where you can keep badges yeah so it's called this place is called badger and because that's one of the companies dealing with badges they said it's okay we can we can host this backpack meaning that you can add whatever badges you have you can add this to that backpack if you wish so and then from there um you need to click on add the badge so at first sorry you need to download your badge and you will see it download simply as the PNG file, like an image file. So you click download. And then here, you just need to click add badge. And I already did it. So you can see that um, I got this badge actually exported from the hub platform and imported to another place. And that's the idea of open badges, that they are open credentials and they can be moved between the platforms. And you can keep your badges wherever you want to keep. So you can see that uh, an email to whom the badge was issued. What does it mean? It, so all the data moved uh, also together with the badge. Yeah, It says when it was issued, who is the issuer? Uh, 
And then from here, I can do different kind of things. You can also see the criteria. And then when I go share, it allows me to do different things. Share on um, social media websites. It even generates HTML code if you want to add to your blog, for example. It can also uh, make a, a copy, like a shareable uh, URL, which you can copy. And then you can add this, for example, in your LinkedIn certificates. So you can have all your badges added to your certification on LinkedIn. And in this way, you can prove that you, know, you were learning things. So I think that's the, um, these are the essentials uh, of badges. Um, in most cases, because when you're setting up the uh, um, badge issuing um, automatically, so people just, you know, finishing the module and they get a badge and they are able to see their latest badges, um, as I showed in their either badges section, you know, or in their profile, like these are your badges. So I think these are the, the basics and maybe now some questions. Should we put, ah, yes, question mode. Sammy so asking, is the, um, I was showing mainly the, the websites, so I don't know um, what exactly would you like to get. Yeah, the original uh, question was from Bob uh, when you were uh, showing the pictures about the badges. And also, okay. I would be happy to get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, do you have a space where I can share it? I'm more asking than organizers of the course. So. Are yeah, you, sure. are you all? I can upload it to the, the um, online platform. Yeah, I'm happy to, to include it there. Okay, then I will uh, I will put it on Slack and then you can you can take it from yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And we also have the Facebook group of authors and facilitators. I could see yeah. as a group of this webinar, we were already sharing quite many things there. Uh huh. All right. Yeah. Then I can add a few things on badges there. Sure. Any other questions? If you want to start adding badges to your course, for example. Uh, I'm trying to formulate it. Um, I, I get the idea of the the new school idea um, to have rewards for very small things. It's uh, I like it very much. Uh, at the same time, I think uh, the badges that I want to uh, to share then to the world. Seems for me, I don't know, I'm doing two free uh, courses and um, it seems like uh, flooding yeah, to me sometimes because they're done already a, a lot. Yeah. Um, and if we're talking also about recognition of learning, how, how, do, you, how do you see this? Um, or is there a way to, to, I don't know, make it easier? I don't know is a solution i was I had an idea to make at the end of the course one badge that includes all other badges so you get a kind of a i don't know a meta badge at the end which is uh, especially nice uh, which includes all the activities of the four one so i'm i'm not i'm not sure how to to handle this this amount of badges um, if people are starting doing i don't know three four five six seven courses yeah, hmm. yeah. Um, I think, uh, I don't know exactly on the, um, on the hub platform, if you can have these so-called meta badges, uh, when we're using our own batch platform, for sure, we can like compile badges and then say, if you get these five badges, you get like the meta badge and meta badge is issued for the entire course. Yeah. 
but I think here, really, uh, if we even look from the employer side, they are often asking really for more details for your specific skills and knowledge that you that you have, right? Because if you see, I'm in general, I know a lot about European Solidarity Corps. I don't know whether it's agency or SALTO, they would say, well, what exactly do you know? How can you prove it? So actually, everyone is trying to get to details and, and granular uh, level saying, what exactly do you know? And badges can actually show it quite well because they would have evidence saying, these are the small things that you did. These are the maybe things that or assignments you had to add. So I don't think that there's a big problem to show. I think it's more about uh, maybe having badges in collections. So not necessarily to add every single badge link to your LinkedIn profile, but rather having uh, collections of badges and then share it with them or, or adding few badges into one place and then generating a link to the whole collection. Maybe that sometimes would make more sense. So actually you show all the badges, but people don't need to click on, on each of them. Um, again, um, uh, for the hub platform, I don't know exactly uh, what are the functionalities there to compile badges. At the moment, I think it's you just have all badges that you have and you can download them. And then when it comes to importing, I see people also asking a few questions on Badger, for example. Um, they have they have this aspect of pathways, but I, I never tried it out. But uh, you need to see if uh, actually you can add your existing badges and show your, for example, pathway of learning. And that could be an interesting thing to, to show that it's not just like a single badge achieved somewhere, but it, you are on the pathway to something. So in that case, uh, maybe it would be more clear um, representation of your achievements and representation of your learning journey. There was a question if people can, yes, uh, anyone can just have their profile and, and add a badge uh, there. You just need to have email matching. So if you use one email for a hub platform, you need to use the same email because the email is your ID. So meaning that the platform needs to understand that this badge really belongs to you. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what the question is related to. Uh, yeah, sorry, it was the same as before and it's already answered, thanks. Okay. It was part of the, the previous question. Yeah. Because the, basically the admin of the course, what, what that person can do is really setting up badges and requirements and then allowing people to get badges for something they achieve in the course. And then you as a course designer, then you can decide what else do you want to, what kind of other information you want to provide. Maybe you want to provide instructions how to download a badge and how to add badge to some other existing platforms or how to use badge for sharing. Sometimes people really ask, what do I do with a badge? So sometimes it's good to actually add few ideas what people can do with it. And I think it's really good if we promote the idea of sharing badges publicly, because that's also a promotion of our course or the ideas that we're trying to promote. The more people will be sharing badges, it's also additional visibility to our badge. Any other questions? You Microphone, like thanks a lot. Maybe we, if it's possible, Damon, as you are with us a few more minutes, uh, of course, the question and answer mode is on. So there might be more questions coming. And I wanted to share really for three minutes uh, my screen uh, to show you more maybe from the hop technical point of view. Uh, a little uh, comments. Uh, is it fine? Sure. Right. Uh, let me. Okay. So we have been talking about uh, 
I would call it maybe nesting the criteria, right? Uh, this is the badges uh, that you can uh, see in the plan, create and publish course. Uh, so you can also see how they were uh, prepared, how they were set in the course here. So if you go to hop, create and publish, there is the badges uh, section and there are, I think, four of them. And uh, with all the elements that Laimonas was explaining also, and these uh, requirements are kind of nested, but I will explain you how on the example of the other course. This is the welcome to hop, a uh, very basic course with four elements, as you can see. The last element uh, is uh, restricted. So the learner can uh, only make this uh, activity if the three previous uh, activities are uh, fulfilled. Of course, there are different criteria. This can be manually fulfilled. These two uh, people need to do something inside uh, to have a discussion, to create their profile as an assignment and uh, get a confirmation that it's ready. So if these three elements are marked uh, green, done, then only the last one will be open to be uh, possible to make. So that's uh, in the flow of learning, but also this can be represented in the batch so in there is one batch in this course and as you see in the criteria is only this last element so it's kind of nested because of course to be able to do to make this last activity uh, learners had to do three previous uh, activities to be able to reach here so the criteria is kind of limited uh, and to one but actually of course you know because you are creating the learning path that to make this one activity a person had to to make several other uh, activities in the course. Uh, that's one thing I wanted to show you. Uh, also, I wanted to show you, uh, okay, the badge here. Uh, that's uh, how it looks like, Lemonas was explaining. Our, uh, one of our update uh, aims uh, when we update the platform now from April is to have the possibility here to have a button to share at least to Facebook. So people could uh, share it directly from here into uh, Facebook at least. Let's see if the other social media are possible. Uh, but if not, the, the new uh, uploaded, uh, upgraded uh, Moodle will allow to uh, add the badge into Badger that Limonas was explaining. Uh, this is uh, this version we are using here now is a Moodle 3.5. It doesn't allow for it, but from April we'll have 3.8, which will allow. And then, as a user of a hop, uh, a person can go to preferences, and then there is a backpack setting uh, where the person uh, can uh, connect the Badger backpack with the hop platform, and then the user himself herself can decide which of the badges uh, to be uh, uh, publicly made public in a badger, which is also a kind of a uh, little on my point of view into the issue that uh, Michel was raising. Uh, there might be several badges in the course, but actually as a learner, you can decide to move to the backpack only those badges which you find the most relevant or the most important for you, something that you want to make really public and from the badger, as Laimonas was showing, uh, they can be embedded elsewhere. They can be also yeah. okay. And if Laimonas is still with us, I I had this uh, question to you, Laimonas, uh, because I was already uh, commenting on it uh, when you were joining. Um, the question was, uh, would it be maybe possible or what are the constraints and how do you see if the Batchcraft can be connected with Hop Platform? We had the talk once, uh, we discussed that this API, that this, this, this uh, application that allows to communicate between the platforms may be a challenge, uh, but I'm not sure what was the uh, results. How do you feel? Yeah, it's basically... Uh you know, every, every, every company is deciding whether to do these further developments and integrations of the uh, specific platforms. And uh, we started some WordPress developments in some moments, and then we stopped because we were not sure, you know, how many more 
badge issuers this would this would generate or how much more opportunities it gives but i mean in order to have uh, let's say badges that are created on batchcraft to be visible um on on the on on moodle you know on particular hub platform then you know this this connection needs to be created so to make it moment, automatic because I can also imagine you can create your uh, system of badges for your hop course on Batchcraft, and then you just uh, copy and paste. I mean, you recreate the I mean, system in the hub, right? Um, not exactly. I mean, you need to have these two platforms communicating to each other if you want also to show some of the functions. So there is also one kind of very blunt way that you create badges on Batchcraft, and then you put a QR code or you put a, a, a link to that badge. Like you say, oh, if you want to get a badge for participating here and there, then you know you click on the link. But if we want to do it this way, like uh, adding criteria, like completion of some uh, activities on hop, and then badge is issued automatically, then this requires much deeper integration and mm -hmm. which needs to be built. Okay. And at, at, at the moment, we, we, we were not building it. All right. So for the hop itself, uh, hopefully from April, uh, our learners can share badges directly from hop, at least in social media. They can share them, of course, with the link uh, that Limonas was showing. They can share them into a badger backpack. Uh, so that's already many opportunities to make them public. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I tried actually, you know, adding a link to the Facebook page, to the Facebook profile, and it's, it's possible to put it like on the wall and share it, like this is the badge I've got. But uh, there has to be more work done to just, um, you know, show the badge image nicely, show the information mm -hmm. nicely. So these are the few, few things that still need to be kind of fine-tuned. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thanks a lot. Uh